morning everyone welcome back to outpost review it's actually 27 degrees out so i figured i'd make a fire because i know that he's going to be laying down taking a nap later and i'm going to be trying to get some siding up on the side of the cabinet there i actually made a back door and since i'm closing up that side over there so let me show you that no we're not going outside so as you can see right here, it's very rudimentary. He thinks we're going outside. Um, but just a simple latch right here. No, we're not going outside. Come on. Where you can open it and the same thing on the outside where I can close it, you know, basically when I leave at night. Um, but just something to keep the high winds out. It does have a crack at the top and at the bottom. I'll have to about a quarter inch um, in case it, you know, since it's made out of uh, basically two by twos in case it kind of sags some but uh, no I mean it's, it's working great so far so maybe I did a good job building it but it's just something to keep uh, the cold out like I say uh, somewhat and to look at that there's moisture on the inside of this right here um, until I get you know the whole exterior closed up um, since I'm closing that up over there where I've been coming in and out I needed to use either the back or the front I've got a lot of stuff that's um, stacked up over there at the front so I decided to go ahead and put this on the back now when I start on the back side I'll work my way from that in this way so this will be the last section between these two posts right here um, but I'm going to frame out you know around this anyway so yeah, I think that it'll be sufficient until um, I can go ahead and get my permanent doors in here. The, uh, I've got some pretty good news, uh, for me anyway. <laughs> um, at the church, they've got two huge maple trees in front of the parsonage, and the uh, pastor, now when they grew up, they grew about possibly 10 or 12 feet, and then they just branched out. So there's not really any logs in them, and uh, they're probably this big around. They're, they're really good size. So I'll have to take the chainsaw and go around it, but all of the limbs, um, and the trunk, once I can get it uh, sawed up, should bust up into a lot of wood. So I've got some help that's going to uh, come and, and help me get that down. So I may video some of that, uh, cutting the tree down, because some of the limbs are kind of leaning towards the parsonage. So what I think I'm going to do is um, cut those limbs off on the front side uh, the best I can and then use the ones that are on the back side to help that weight to pull them over so that they don't hit the house, but there's two of them and they're huge and that will probably make all of the wood, um, if not most of the wood that I will need for this coming winter. So I'm excited about that because you know, maple is a hardwood. And uh, anyway, so that's pretty exciting. And I've got a lot of dead wood down there in that pasture that I'm gonna be cutting up. But I um, also have some exciting news. I have a, or we have, a subscriber that's been so nice and generous as to the young lad that's been coming up here helping me, Patrick. Um, he's seen fit or felt in his heart that the young man needed uh, his own tools. So um, I've got them in the truck. I'll get them out here shortly and I'll let you see what um, he, the kind, out of the kindness of his heart that he ordered and sent to the outpost uh, on behalf of this young man so that he will have his own tools to be able to use and to learn, you know, I'm not any teacher by any means, but, um, you know, he, he can probably learn a few things, uh, but he'll have his own tools where he can use those to work with and develop some life skills that uh, he might be able to use later on. I asked him 
I said, so you thinking about maybe later on building your own house? He goes, oh no. I said, why not? He goes, I don't know enough about it. I'll just hire it done. And I said, well, you learn enough out here, possibly, you know, if you had your own property uh, that you could build your own. Of course, there's a lot of undeveloped areas that have no restrictions uh, or guidelines in the mountains around here. Uh, so he would have to certainly, you know, do that in one of those areas. Now, you can contract your own house, but you have to pass all the inspections um, because the one that I did before, I did borrow the money and I contracted it myself, drew up all the plans and, and everything. But uh, so yeah, maybe he can learn a few skills and uh, develop, you know, uh, the, the proper ways of, of using the tools that he was sent. So. Yeah, I really want to thank the subscriber that sent this nice tool belt. He sent this nice 25-foot uh, Craftsman tape, um, some utility knives, sent a really nice uh, speed square, and this, is this a 22? Um, no, 25-ounce framing hammer. Um, I hope he's big enough to use that. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, that that carries a lot of driving power behind it. Um, and then this nice leather, very nice leather tool pouch. So I really want to say thank you so much for um, you know the kindness in your heart for sending this to someone that uh, volunteers are time to come up here and help. Um, I have all kinds of tools up here. You know, the young man was welcome to use any of them, but um, this subscriber seen fit that he needed his own, and I'm sure that he will really appreciate them. Um, he doesn't know what is up, so he will be here this coming Saturday, so when he gets here, I will video giving this to him so that y'all can see the surprise on his face. But uh, anyway, guys, like I say, we have some of the best people following this channel. And, you know, it just warms our heart that people are so interested in what we're doing up here that they have, you know, um, thoughts and ideas of doing something like this, you know, for the people that come up here to help us, you know. He's a friend of my daughter's, and I, um, I had never met him, you know, and he started watching our videos, and he asked my daughter if he could come up here to hang out, and uh, I said, certainly, you know, and he, uh, I know he's learning a lot up here because, uh, you know, he is from uh, one of the nearby towns, um, but being off-grid up here, up in the woods, you know, you learn to develop a lot of life skills and I know that he will definitely appreciate this and he'll learn some things you know even if it's only building a, a dog house or a dog bed like I built for Smokey or um, you know an outdoor shed he may not even want to tackle a, a home like this on his own but because uh, it is a big project but uh, anyway I'm certain that he will definitely appreciate this and thank you so much and thank all of you for all your support on both of our channels and the fact that you know you share our videos with other people that means so much to us and don't forget that we have a 40,000 subscriber giveaway we have a big ticket item we're only about I think about 5,000 away from that um, but it's a nice chainsaw a steel chainsaw I think it's an MS 180 uh, we'll be giving that away at 40,000 so be sure and share you know, both of our channels with all of your family, friends, neighbors, people that you work with, um, help us get there because we're really itching to give that away. Um, I know that some lucky winner will certainly appreciate that. And, you know, we're looking forward to our giveaways increasing and getting uh, bigger and bigger. So, you know, the reason we do that is because of you guys and all your support. So, thank you very much.
you know, getting those gifts like that is kind of like Christmas all over again up here at the outpost. And speaking of Christmas, I received this Christmas card. Um, you know, I don't get to the post office, but maybe about once a month. Um, but uh, when I picked that stuff up, I actually picked this up too. I don't know how long it had been there. Uh, probably within the last month, like I say. But it says, Richard, Jennifer, Patrick, and Smokey wishing you a holly jolly Christmas and Happy New Year too. It has been great following you guys. Hoping you have a wonderful Christmas. You guys are awesome and have a great channel. All the best, Sherry Walls. Sherry, we can't tell you what this means to us, even though I did pick it up a little bit late. I'm sorry, um, but it means a great deal to us. You know, all of the things, we don't expect anything, honestly, but the things that we have been receiving from you guys out there, it just warms our heart, you know, and um, I don't mind, you know, the videos are not about things that, you know, are sent to us. Um, but it just pleases my heart to uh, show this because of you guys and thanking you and letting you know how much we do appreciate it. So, Sherry, thank you so much and we wish you a happy, happy new year. Well, as you see, I have almost half of it done. I lacked two battens. Um, I got that far and quit that day. I did put up this yesterday, this radiant barrier. So uh, the other day when it was raining, I spent most of the day, I didn't do any filming, but I have four, basically four sections left to do. Um, and I've got all of the two by fours with a cladding cut for all of those. So here in just a little bit, I'm going to get uh, ready to start work, but I'll pull those out. They should go uh, fairly quick. The only thing that I have left is to cut up there at the top. I need to run some horizontal 2 by 4s because it's too far stretched not to have any screws on the side uh, or on the boards when I put them up. I had some comments. People wanted to know why I wasn't using nails uh, for my nail gun instead of the screws. Well, first of all, I think screws hold a whole lot better. Um, and my desire was for if I did have any um, shrinkage and any drying, you know, when summer gets here, that I didn't want the nails to basically work loose. So uh, I decided to go ahead and do it with screws. Um, I could use the nail gun but a lot of times it just drives it way up into the wood. And I know that there is some adjustment, but I also have more control over the drill. Um, but uh, it's been going along really good. The uh, screws seem to be holding really tight, so he's found him a, a cap to play with off of one of the propane tanks. So <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, I decided to go ahead and use the screws. Um, there's not really a big difference in the price, I don't think. Um, and I, like I said, I believe that the screws will hold better. So, and the other good thing about it is too, if I want to take one off, I just back the screws out. So it's a lot different than trying to work them out with nails. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's coming along. So as soon as I get this section done right here, then all I have left is the back. So uh, the young man is coming back up here, like I said, again Saturday. Um, what we're going to try to do while he's here is get the plywood put up underneath the eaves on the back of the house and it shouldn't be too hard it's just you know trying to hold an eight foot length by yourself but um, it's only about a foot wide so it shouldn't take long to get that uh, put up on the back those boards that jennifer had worked on originally that had got wet they have dried out considerably inside with me building a fire pretty much every day when I come up here. Um, so they will be used on the back of the house and then I've got plenty left over there in that stack that um, I will have more than what I need in order to cover the back. The only thing that's going to be time consuming is disassembling the um, flue system for the fireplace 
and actually putting it back. And you know, originally I had in mind to leave the flue where it's at because I wanted a mantle. Um, I didn't want to come up and go out and then have a mantle behind that. To me, that would just look, it wouldn't look good. But um, the more I think about it, I may go ahead and decide to do some sort of a mantle on either side. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. But I may go ahead and run my flue up and then turn it out a little bit more. Um, but it is heating considerably better with all of this radiant barrier up there. And of course, I know that the siding helps as well. But, uh, you know, that radiant barrier, it may be really doing a good job once I get it insulated and everything it may be well worth its money uh, to have put that in. So, yeah, I've got uh, four sections left. As soon as this is done, then I've only got three. So, I thought I would bring you out here and show you that because I am, it feels like I'm making progress, although it seems like it's dragging out because when you put all the boards on, you get it covered, then you gotta go back and put all the battens on, so it's kinda like doing it twice, but uh, I'm really liking the outcome of the board and batten, and um, I think it's really going to look good. Now you have to remember too, wherever there's a post, I'm going to go ahead and take the batten back off because it's going to take me a little while to take the slab wood, peel the bark off of it, burn it, and get it put up. But wherever there is a post, and especially the corner, I'm going to do a wrap around the corner with the slab wood, so hopefully it will kind of look like a tree. And then of course at every post, I'm going to do the same thing. So, the, uh, like I say, where the board and batten meets the post, that will come back off and the slab wood will go up there. So it's going to look a little bit different once I get it done. But um, anyway, I think it's really looking good with just the board and batten on there. So uh, let's go back inside and check on the fire because uh, I need to get it, uh, you know, going really well before I come out here and start working. So, yeah, what I was talking about was probably when I disassemble this what I may do is raise this up to about right here and then turn and go out um, you know that will provide a little bit more radiant heat off of this which is not what I was after to start with I was after the mantle um, but because this thing seems to be giving off enough heat once you get a good fire going in there and I'm thinking that when I get the insulation in here and um, you know, hopefully this thing is going to be a lot more um, weather resistant because I am filling those gaps with caulking primarily to keep the moisture from getting to the back side. Um, but that will also keep any wind, you know, from working its way through into the house. Um, so hopefully by some of those added measures that, you know, I've been doing, um, this will be sufficient for the whole house and I think that it will be once I get the radiant barrier underneath on the bottom of the floor joists I've got to have, have it on the walls you know I've had comments too about you know why aren't you doing it on the gable ends well <laughs> first of all I had planned on putting up T111 siding okay so I mean I've mentioned this before but I still get comments about it um, and then I decided not to, but what I did was is I pushed the 2x4s up there all the way to the edge of the wall so that I could put the T111 siding on because I was only going to originally take the 1x10s up that far. Um, but then I decided that I had enough of the 1x10s to go ahead and go all the way so that would save me some money. And, but the walls or those sections up there were already built. so. The radiant barrier, you know, there were two sections up front. I guess, you know, like I've said before, I thought I was putting on house wrap. And I actually put it on the outside, which I have to go back and cut that out and put it on this side of my cladding, especially on those two front sides. Um, but anyway, uh, my point is that I can't put it up there now. I can, you know, so my idea is what I'm going to do is get two inch foam insulation that has the silver side on it and then I'm going to have plenty of this radiant barrier left over so what I'll do is I'll just take some adhesive and cut it and glue it on the back of that so I'll have both sides and since I've got the horizontal 2x4s up there on 
the gable ends, what I can do is I can push it all the way to those 2x4s and then I'll have a barrier on one side to, for the sun, you know, the radiant heat in the summertime. And then I will also have the barrier on the back side uh, for the radiant heat that's on the inside of the house in the wintertime. And I'll still have an airspace on both sides because that two inch foam won't take up the whole two by four. And I think that by having that plus the R factor that I get from the boards, the dead airspace and the two inch foam, that I'll, it, it will be sufficient for the cabin and especially the output that I'm getting off of this right here. So I think that that's going to be okay. Um, and that's my plan for getting the radiant barrier up on the gable ends. So, um, you know, if I hadn't, if, if I had decided in the beginning that I was going to do the board and batten all the way to the top, I would have never put it all the way. I would have done it like the lower walls. But I changed my mind at the last minute just to save some money. And I thought, well, you know, how can I change that where I've got radiant barrier up there? And that's my answer. So um, that's what I've got in mind doing. And uh, so that answers questions about radiant barrier on the, the gable ends going all the way to the ceiling. And then of course, inside when I do my tongue and groove up on the uh, two by sixes on the bottom of the roof, uh, which is actually going to be my ceiling. You gotta remember, there's not gonna be any ceilings in here. So that's gonna be my ceiling. And I may end up um, doing something similar uh, on that as well. So we'll just have to see. I may have enough room to go ahead and put um, insulation in there and you know I may be able to put some barrier on that. I don't know if I could actually do that um, you know without having to add a bunch of strips up in there to tack to you know it's just a, a bunch of added more work. I may be able to work out something in that manner. Uh, to be able to insulate the roof. Now the other home that I built, I actually used two inch foam that had uh, OSB glued to the back side of it. Uh, but at that time, you know, there was no mention of any kind of radiant barrier, which was um, back in 1995. Um, so, you know, I may look at, kind of like what I'm doing on the gable ends, about getting some foam um, and just doing the same thing and putting a barrier on both sides of that. So we'll just have to see. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this video off here. appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, I know today is a little bit different, but uh, I need to get busy and see if I can't close that up over there before I open up another section uh, because when I get that done, I've only got three left to go. So. I'm excited about that to get to move on to the raised beds because it won't be long. Let's see, what is it? Um, getting towards the end of February, it's only, we're only about six weeks away from planning. And um, I'm excited about getting those raised beds put together so that I can get on with planting season. And then I'm going to start busting some holes uh, to start that chicken house up there. And I may come down here on rainy days because by getting this off, I can actually, uh, the filming is turning out a lot better um, without this background of this the difference in the light that the camera, you know, is picking up. So I should be able to, you know, do a little bit better filming on the inside and I can work down here because when spring gets here, we do have a lot of rainy days. So I can come in here and work on, on the rainy days and then when it's nice, I can work on those projects that I've got in mind outside. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And again, thank you so much for all of your support. My son, my daughter and I, we can't thank you enough for the kindness that you guys have shown our channels and our family here and the people that um, work up here, all the comments. And again, you know, we don't expect anything but the nice cards and the the things, the gifts that you guys send, you know, we can't thank you enough because it does mean a whole lot to us and I know that it means a lot to the people that come up here uh, to help out as well. So thank you for that support. Thank you for sharing our channels with um, people that you know 
uh, we greatly appreciate that as well. And like I said, don't forget about that 40,000 subscriber giveaway because we're getting pretty close to it. And I'm excited to give that chainsaw away. Anyway, so you all have a great day. Take care. We look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time. <music>